Good morning, dear students. Today I am going to speak on the poem Sonnet 130. This is a famous sonnet by William Shakespeare in which he talks about the beauty of his beloved. The person that you see in the image is William Shakespeare. Before we move and talk about the poem, let me tell you about William Shakespeare. He was born at Stratford upon Avon, England. He is a renowned English dramatist, poet, and actor. He is called the National Poet of England and the Bard of Avon. William Shakespeare wrote 37 plays and 154 sonnets and you must be knowing that his plays have been translated into many languages worldwide and Ben Johnson the greatest writer says that William Shakespeare was not of an age but for all time William Shakespeare's play are divided into four categories, histories, comedies, tragedies, and romances. Some of his famous plays are Hamlet, King Lear, Macbeth, Othello, The Merchant of Venice, and The Tempest. William Shakespeare contributed significantly to poetry. His poetic works include 154 sonnets and long poems, Venice and Adonis, and The Rape of Lucrece. His plays and poetry, even today, is a subject matter of study, reinterpretation, and research. Now, let me tell you about the poem Sonnet 130. William Shakespeare reverses the conventions and traditions of the Patriarchan sonnet and refuses to glorify the beauty of his beloved. He does not compare her beauty with that of the beautiful things and objects present in this nature. Though, after reading the first twelve lines, it appears that he is against love, but he is not. In fact, he mocks the poets who glorified the image of beloved and compared her beauty to the sun, the moon, the snow, the rose flowers, and music. In the last two lines of his poems, he confesses that his beloved is very beautiful and unique. She is rare and hence. She is not an object to be compared with the sun and the moon. He emphasizes she is unique, she is rare, and hence he refuses to compare her to the sun and the moon. Now I am going to read the text of the poem and then I shall explain the poem in detail. Sonnet 130 by William Shakespeare My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses the masked red and white, but no such roses I see in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, it will I know that music has a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. 
and eat. By heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. Now, let us begin the discussion. The conventional poets in the Petrarch sonnet compared the eyes of the beloved to the sun. They compared the lips of the beloved to coral. They compared the skin, the color of the skin to the snow. But William Shakespeare here refuses to glorify the beauty of his beloved. He says, my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. What does it mean? He says that her eyes are not as bright as the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. What is coral? What is the meaning of the coral? Coral is large ribs that we find in ocean. So, the color of the coral is more red than the lips of his beloved. If snow be white, the poet says that the color of the snow is white. But the color of the skin of his beloved and her breast is not as white as the sun. It is done. What is the meaning of the word done here? A dull grayish brown color. So this is how we see that the poet reverses the similes used by the conventional poet in the Petrarchan sonnet. The conventional poets glorified the beauty and compared the beauty of the beloved to the beauty of the sun, to the beauty of the coral, to the beauty of the snow, but the poet refuses to do anything. He says, if hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. So she doesn't have the golden hair. So she is not a white woman, she is a black. She is brownish in color. And if the hairs grow on the head of the men and women, then yes, wires too grow on the head of his beloved. Now, I move on to the second stanza of the poem and let us see what the poet has to say. I have seen roses damask red and white, but no such roses see. I see in her cheeks. The poet says that the conventional poets compared the beauty of the cheeks of the beloved to the red roses. But he finds that the rose flowers are more beautiful than the cheeks of his beloved. In the third line of the poem, he says that we derive delight from perfume. So perfumes give us delight, happiness. So he says that I get delight from the perfumes, but I don't find that fragrance in the breath that comes out from his beloved. So the meaning of uh, Rick's hair is unpleasant smell. So perfumes are more delightful than the breath that comes out from the mouth of his beloved. Now I move on to the third stanza of this poem. Let us see what William Shakespeare has to say here. I love to hear her speak. It well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. The poet says that I'm committed to her. I love to hear her speak, but I must accept, I must have to accept that 
the musing has more pleasing sound than her voice. In the third line of the poem, the poet says, I grant, the meaning of the word grant is confess. I confess, I have never seen a goddess walking on the earth, but my mistress, she walks. But when she walks, she treads heavily on the ground. She, she tramples the ground. And aid by heaven, I swear. Now, the poet changes the tone and says that his love is as rare as the sun and the moon and any other beautiful object and thing in nature. As he finds that she is unique, he says that he would not like to compare her beauty with that, with that of the beauty of the sun, the moon, the snow, the coral. Why? Because she is unique. She is unique among all and hence he does not make he does not follow the conventional poets who compared the beauty of the beloved to the sun to the moon they gave they spent too much time on glorifying the beauty and presenting every minute detail of the external appearance of the beloved but the poet, in short, in 14 lines, expresses his deepest feelings of love and accepts, though he is not going to compare her with false things. False, what does he mean here? He means that she is unique. Hence, there is no need to compare her with any other thing that is present and that is beautiful in nature. She is unique. So, no need to compare her with any other thing the way the conventional poets did in their poetry that they glorified the beauty they focus too much on the external appearance but the poet presents the beloved in her human capacity and accepts her as what she is now uh, let me move on to the last part and that is conclusion William Shakespeare depicts his love for his beloved, but while doing so, he parodies the conventional style of the Petrarchan sonnet in which the poets praised the beauty of the beloved and compared it to a number of beautiful things and objects present in nature. William Shakespeare projects the image of his beloved and shows her in human capacity as what she is and what she is not. Here he confesses that she is unique for him and hence he refuses to compare her to the sun, the moon and the rose. His use of striking imagery, lucid words and poetic devices expresses love for his beloved. And this is how he sets an example of new pattern in writing sonnets to be followed by the next generations in their poems. This is all for today. Thank you very much for listening.